Right, let's see how this goes. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, it says. We're live. Hi. So, let's see how it goes. As I mentioned yesterday, today is the noisy day for this block. So, i a coffee here this morning. <clears throat> I'm not sure how long it's going to take to do the noisy part of this. You know, 15, 10, 15, 20 minutes, and then it'll be quiet for the rest of the session. But there's no way around this. This is going to get a bit noisy. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the microphone and put it higher, 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 higher. I'm not really sure. Can you still hear me? I guess so. I'm not really sure. But uh, it's better to... Uh... All right, let's just do this thing. <clears throat> Usual procedure. What I'm doing on these, you know, I, I haven't really explained it much. We talked about these blocks as being a three-step process. Step one is mostly the carving knife work. Step two is mostly the clearing work. And step three is running up to the edges to finish between the two. But the clearing work itself, each carver has his own way of doing this. <laughs> And it's been my custom. What I do is I take one of the U gouges. I take about a 15 U gouge. It's really quite shallow. And as you see in a few minutes, I'm going to run around first horizontally, or, or whichever way you look at it, vertically, I guess, on the image, against the grain, on all the end places. And this doesn't really matter which way the wood grain is, heads or tails. So I'm going to take off the end grain first near these things. Because you can't start with a big chisel running up close to where you're where you've been carved it's of course way too dangerous so the first step will be to produce these gutters there's a gutter beside each of the vertical parts of the image and then once that's clear then i'll switch horizontally and i'll work up to those gutters and at that point the wood grain comes into play and i don't remember which way it is on this block i might be able to go this way i might not be able to i'll have to switch it around and go the other way Yes, the, car the party blocks are deeper than a normal block, absolutely. No question here. I'm going to carve the party blocks deeper. We're still not going to go into the plywood. What, do we, what have I got here? Is it four millimeters maybe on the edge of this thing? Four, 4.5, somewhere on there. And I doubt I'll be going through to the inner plywood. So when we say deep, we're still not really talking about all that deep. All right, I think I'll leave it at that zoom for the first part of this. Change my glasses here. Let's get going.
that's a 15 millimeter. This is a six, I think. I should get a nine as well, but I never seem to get around to it. What's happening over here? Nothing much, okay. We're against the green, I can see.
four. Loose handle on that one, you can hear that, that rattling of the metal and the wood. These chisels really need some maintenance, you know. They've been ignored for quite a while. Okay, I might be all the damage I can do inside the thing with these chisels. That's a bit shallow, I think, here. Okay, let's get around the outside. question before I forget just me before I forget look at this <laughs> it's a generic question about wood and uh, there's no specific answer. Somebody's asking about obtaining wood from a local source like a lumber yard, something like this. And without knowing what you're trying to do, it's impossible to make a really specific answer. If you're just exploring woodpot printmaking, I can't tell you what kind of wood you need because we don't know. Are you going to be carving fine lines? Are you going to be carving wide areas? Are you going to be making ukiyo-e reproductions? Are you making some modern work? You know, it really, without being to sort of blow you away, I can't really give much advice on wood if you've never made prints before. My own first prints, literally, were made on wood that I got from the stack waiting for the fireplace. Just pulled out some wood that was waiting to be burned in a fireplace. I don't even know what it was and just played, trying to cut some stuff, trying to print some shapes, trying to work with it to see what came out. It was a disaster, total disaster as far as making beautiful prints went, but it provided experience that, okay, I see now, you know, like the first wood might have been a piece of pine, the second one might have been a piece of maple, I think that's the way it went. And you learn by trying these little pieces without spending a million years on it to make full, wonderful prints. Just get some pieces of wood and try carving and working and seeing what happens. 
and then you feel what works for you and what doesn't work for you. You know, in the case of our traditional prints, yes, we want this cherry. You don't have that available to you. At the beginning, for your first print, it doesn't matter. In fact, well, whatever, actually, that, that'll... I was going to save this for a bit later in the stream. We, we did some show and tell yesterday about the upcoming video. And I've got a bit more of it today for the upcoming video. And I don't want to interrupt my, my work here. But there's a... I bought the folder of the very first prints I made. And print number one doesn't exist anymore. I only made one or two copies. I mean, I only tried to print it once or twice before throwing it all back in the firewood pile. But the second, third, and fourth prints are here. I don't even remember which one is which. Which one was second, which one was third, I don't know. This would have been, I don't know, 1979, 1980. I was just trying to play with the idea. So it's two pieces of wood. A piece of wood for a background and a piece of wood for some kind of pattern. It was supposed to be something like a Japanese wall. I think it even says Japanese architecture, five scenes. I have no idea what I was thinking about. But it didn't matter. I, I have no idea what piece of wood it was. It's long gone in, in the garbage. But it didn't matter because the experience it provided was so, so important. This one was maple. It was a, like a reproduction. It was on maple and it chipped and popped and cracked all over the place. Maple just doesn't work for this kind of work that we're doing. But I didn't know until I tried it. These are funny. Hopefully they're funny. Like that was, this is another series. Under the Moon Five Scenes. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> It is so bad. I'll, that's okay. I'll laugh. I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter. I had no idea what I was doing. There was no internet. There were no books. There was no nothing. So I'm not embarrassed about it. Totally hacked out work, you know. This is supposed to be a gradation. I had no idea how to make a gradation. It doesn't match. doesn't fit the lines. A big pop missing here. Didn't know how to fix it. How long did it take to get good? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe this is number six, I think. I think this is the order. This is after coming to Japan once and getting some wood. This was done on a nice piece of wood. We'll talk about this in the video. I was able to get a beautiful, nice piece of cherry. I hacked it to death, but it doesn't matter. It was By now, I was trying to learn how to do this. So, so maybe by number six, I was doing something that sort of looked like a Japanese print. I don't know. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I should get back to work. The upcoming video, and it's not going to be my history about printmaking. It's a specific thread in the middle. I won't be showing all of those prints. So that's a separate video later, how I got started on this, what it was all about. This video that's coming up this time is one sort of subtext on that. This is not going to be the video about how it all began for David. Get back to the noise, guys. Sorry. Which way is the grain? I've forgotten. It runs, this, it runs back and forth on this block. I think mostly it runs this way with the wave, but here and there it's different. You can sometimes check. You can look on the side of the piece of the plank. You've got the wood grain, and these lines are running up on the edge of this thing. So it means the grain mostly runs this way, but it's not consistent across the face of the plank. Okay, back to the noise.
it's a hot day here, you know, I can feel it already. It's like 8.30 in the morning, but I'm sweating. When Cameron gets here, he's going to be guzzling water already, I'm sure. Also, too, I should mention, I might have to run early out of here. We normally finish the stream around 9.20 or so. That would normally be about an hour from now. But I might have to run early. We've got TV coming today. Um, TV Tokyo is filming here. They've got some kind of deal about a program where they want to expose places in Tokyo that foreigners have discovered but the Japanese don't know much about. Something like that. I think that's the theme of it. And they're going to feature us. I think it's a 30 minute program and there's three companies so we're going to be one of the three. So we'll get eight, ten minutes or something. And they're coming in at around 9.30. They'll probably be early, so I might have to skip out of here early. We'll see. We'll just play it by ear. What's this? I see comments, questions, what's happening here. Third hit and counting. I think that was the fifth hit. What it is, there's a little tin can sitting behind my bench here. Look at this. It's got a couple of wood chips on top. Two. I've scored twice. I've hit it three or four times, but I've got two wood chips to stay on the top. <laughs> this is not part of my work. Relax. I know he may be he may be here today, or he may not be here. I don't know. I know a friend and collector, Jacques Commandeur, who lives in Holland, the Netherlands. Excuse me. Whatever. He was here a few weeks back, and he left a, a souvenir for us, some cookies. And I ate the first cookie myself, and then passed it on to our staff. And when they had when when they were down to the last one, they brought the can back to me with the last cookie, which I guzzled. And the empty can has been sitting here next to my bench. Whoops. And it just happens to be in the right spot for catching these wood chips. <laughs> Jacques, if you're here, thank you very much. They were tasty. Everybody enjoyed them. He doesn't seem to be here. Probably he watches these, these streams sometimes. Um, he's in Europe, so he watches them later on. So the mic position seems to be okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Maybe you can show them how it's done with your little setup. I'm not sure what you mean. Anyway, whatever, I gotta keep going. Now this, that was easy. The wood, the wood grain runs this way. So we were able to come this way. It wasn't chipping the wood. It was cutting out smoothly, cutting out smoothly. The only place it chips here when I was trying to work uphill. You can't come uphill. It chips the wood. When you're working downhill, it's fine. The wood grain runs this way. So I kept here so it wasn't going to chip as I come round the curve. You're always carving away from the curve, away from the curve, away from the curve. But now I get a problem. Whatever, it's part of the job. I want to come this way because the wood grain goes this way. But you can't carve into a curve because the wood will chip, 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 chip into the curve. So for this one, I've got to go around the other way to carve with the curve, but I'm now going against the grain. So this chisel is going to want to dip and dip and dip and dip and dip and chip. So this is the tough part. Number one is, this, is the safety of that line. And I'm now carving against the grain. Now look at this. The chisel has dropped right in. So I've got to break it, ka -chomp, and we're snapping this off instead of cutting smoothly, but the line stays safe. And he will hack this up. Now this wood is all going to get destroyed, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be chopped away. You can see it chipping up, chipping up, chipping up. And now closer to the line. Hand up high in the hammer, not down here wildly. Hand up high, controlling this carefully. Smaller taps. Excuse me, I can guess who that is. Our TV friends, I suppose. Mushimashi, Moka Honkan, Ohayo Gizaimas. Hi, Domo, Ohayo Gizaimas. Hi. 
。うん、はい、はい。うん、はい、そうですね、はい。今、あの、作品の何点になりますが、全100枚がないですが、何点になりますし、それから元の本、あの、春章の時代の元の本もここにありますから。うん。あ,あの、ようなテーマのものもありますが、あの言葉私たちは使わないんですが、竜<笑>、竜の、竜のお土産という作品ありますが、うん、似てますね。ここに、ここにありますよ。ここにあります。はい。はい。あ、そうですか。はい、いいですよ。いいですよ。はい。あでも本当にあの言葉を私たちは使わないでしょうん。うん。はい。ちょっと注意してくださいですね。あの、はい、はい。はい、はい。うん。OK。今のようやくですね、今3人が10時から養育入ってます。あの、私連絡して、あの3人ともみんないいですよ、大丈夫、テレビがあっても問題ないと返,返事ありました。だもし、タレント、1人ですか今のタレントの話。じゃあ、もし本当に10時からパーティースタートです。じゃあ、今の外国の人3人と、このタレント1人でできると4人ちょうどいいです。10時スタートです。ああ、ちょっと待ってください。ちょっと待ってください。今、ただのメールですが、ちょっと待って。えっとですね、ようやくページもう一回見て。えっとね、ジョン・デイビス。あ最初のようやくは二人、二人しか書いてない。だからカップルか男性二人かわからない。あとの一人は男性です。うん、今、今、鍵開けてますから大丈夫です。そういいよ。あ、はい、いいでしょう、いいでしょう。はい、はい。OK、はい、どうも、待ってます。今、ちょっといいですか今、私は自分のストリーミング、今、生放送中ですね。<笑>いやいや、そうそういい、いい、大丈夫、大丈夫、大丈夫。今、もうみんな笑ってますから大丈夫ですよ。ですが、あの、だから今、今、今、鍵開いてますから、どうぞ、自由で入って、お店に入れて、<笑>これ、奥の部屋にちょっと顔出してください。<笑>はい、大丈夫ですよ。はい、はい。もう、あの、見る人は本当楽しみにやってますから。大丈夫でしょう。はい、OK。どうも。はい、Thank you. はい、はい。It's the TV crew. They want to come early. I told them the door's open. Come on in. So we may be disturbed. I may really have to shut this down. I don't know. Whatever. I'll keep working. I think they're going to just come in by themselves, get set up and get lights organized and stuff like that. I don't know. How much power do I put into your carving strokes? Enough to be fatiguing. No, no, no. There's no hard work at all. Look at my giant power muscles. I don't have any. You saw me. As I told you before, with the, with the, chis- with the hammer, we, we move the position. This thing's got a lot of weight, and this thing does the work. I don't push, push, push. You see me? Look, I'll try and do it now. What was I doing here? For this one, I don't need much power. I'm holding it near the head. And I'm doing small strokes. I'm not working at all. I'm just moving this thing back and forth. I don't get tired. I can do this. Do this 24 hours a day. It's nothing. And in a minute now, when I'm switching to the larger chisel, I'll pull back on the handle, pull back on the handle, pull back. And then you can whack it. Pull farther back and knock it in. This thing does the work, not me. I don't have any muscles. This is not a muscular job at all. I know this place is full of girls doing this. Way I'm around. I'm going around here. I should really get a second stick so I can jam it between the two. I keep meaning to do it one of these years. I've only been doing this 40 years. Now he 
see where this, you can see that against the grain there. It just will not do it. It wants to dig in. So I've got to come this way. But this is dangerous because we're against we're against the curve of the thing. So I'm going to stay well away, well back of the line. Look at this. It's tearing here. If I was up against the line, that would just tear right into the line. So stay well back. well back and get rid of as much wood here. Dig a channel. Bingo! Dig a channel and now we can cut into that channel. Because we've gone down now, this wood is going to split out into that channel. And we get ourselves a nice clean ring. What happens out here doesn't matter. Okay, now the corners have to come out. What we're going to do here Yes, registration marks. I have to be careful not to pull them off. The registration marks are going to be in this corner. And this is a print party block, so these are going to be different from our normal registration marks. Of course, it's still a corner and a line. But they have got to be gigantic, visible from outer space. Because when people stand here with their paper trying to put it in the blocks, we ourselves want a small corner. Because we don't want to fool around with large, but we want a small corner that we can land into. But print party people need, as I said, visible from a huge distance away. So I'm going to leave a registration mark about this big on the corner. So today's job, I'll clean up. You can see I've drawn a line. I'll clean up about up to that line, leaving a huge landing pad. And the other corner I'm torn, there's two things I want to do here. When you put the paper on, if we've carved the corner away, all the way out, down, nothing left here. When they put their paper on, sometimes the corners tend to flop over. And it'll flop down. And because the customers always, the people doing print parties, they always rub their pigment too wide. They rub up into the corner area, even though we tell them not to. So this gets covered with pigment, after, you know, after I've carved it here. And the paper flops down, you get a black mark at the corners. In our own work, what we would do here is I would carve away about these two fingers here, and I would leave the corner beveled off so that it would act as support for the paper while we're printing. And we know when we're rubbing the pigment, we know don't go that far. Just rub on the ring here. But the dummies who come here to do the print party are going to rub everywhere. So I'm really not sure what to do. I want to leave a corner, but if I do, we're going to get sometimes black corners on the finished prints. So I think I'm going to compromise. Let's see. I'll try and go out as far as I can, leave as small a corner as I can to minimize the chance of them getting it, getting it dirty. Is the first floor work all complete? It's plugging along bit by bit by bit. We ordered the tatami, I know, what's today, Thursday? We ordered the tatami uh, on Monday. Tuesday we were off, our own son was down there. He's now put in, he's put in the sink in the party room. And yesterday we took a big step. What we did yesterday, we called in, we found, Cameron dug around and dug around and dug around. And Cameron found someone that can come in and help us with the floor. 
because me and Aoyama Sana, we are running out of time. The, the rate we're going now, it's not going to be finished for, I don't even want to say. So we've, we found a guy who we think can help us with the floor. And we may give him the go ahead to do that. So Aoyama Sana and I can get started on the cabinetry. This. It could be Cameron, it could be the TV dudes. Who's, who's going to do this? We don't know. Oh, it's you. Okay. Hi, hi. Hey, Tony, Cameron said, I just got a call from the TV guys. They want to start early. So, in fact, I thought that might have been them. I told them I left the door open. Did you okay, leave it open? Yep, I left yep. it open because yep. I figured yep. it was open for a reason. They're coming. What they want to do is they want to grab a couple of the Heroes prints, oh. take them outside or somewhere to shoot. And I'm not quite sure because he wants a specific one, the one that we call the Dragon's Gift. Oh, okay. And he kept referring it by to by it by its copyright name. And I'm asking him, like, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. And he's like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. So when he comes here in a few minutes, shake him down again. Make sure he understands that. Yeah. Uh, so we can't call it that. He can do whatever he wants, but we can't. So, so find out what, what he wants. He wants. He said, can we borrow it and take it away for a few minutes? So yeah. find out what he wants to do with it. You know? Okay. Do you know? Hmm? Do we have a, an official Japanese translation of that? that no, name or no, no, we don't. Everything's okay. in English. So, okay. No. We call it the Dragon's Gift, and that's all it is. There is okay. no Japanese name. It's okay. So they're coming in a few minutes. Okay. He's just phoned now, and I'm speaking in Japanese, and these guys are all trying to translate. And the contact's not here. He was here this morning, but he's gone. So oh, no. there's nobody left who can. We can translate for yeah. them. So. <laughs> They're all stuck guessing. <laughs> I don't I haven't been able to follow what's going on here. This is different conversations going on here today. Seating in the party room is almost done. Keep the corners. Flip down metal shields. No, flip down metal shields for homework, yes, but for the party room, no. It's gotta be simple. Bang, do it. Casual about having a TV crew over. This is the 5,672nd time we've had a TV crew over. I don't know. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Casual about that? It's yeah. not a weekly occurrence. It's, I don't know, whatever. It, it's happened once or twice in our history, so. If you come up the stairs. <laughs> so, you know, and that's, I gave up doing that years ago. That's yeah, just, you, you know, can whatever. see a, so, a screenshot so. from dozens of TV programs. So, Steve's appeared on. I keep thinking, what am I doing here? Okay, good, good, good. Do you want to take the computer for a bit? Those guys are coming yeah, in a minute. They show up. The thing is, if, if they come now, you're going to go talk to them and the computer's gone from me. So. Oh, yeah. That's so, not uh, funny. I'm not sure what to say. Uh, okay. They're going to come in a few minutes. Let's hang on for a few right. minutes here. Sure. Right. Also, the computer upstairs, what I did uh, at the moment, I took it offline. Okay. At the moment. It, it was online all night. It was doing its processing. A bunch yeah. of payments came in. But yeah. I took it offline because of the. I thought about this. When we were changing over last night, I remembered. Yeah. This thing about the Amazon backup that we do, you know, we right. back up the stuff to an S3 bucket and it yeah. triggers at nine o'clock. Mm. And I've told it because we've had this trouble with the stream. I yeah. have told it not to do that. But it's doing it anyway. That may be, but what, it may be ignoring my instructions. Either I got it wrong or yeah. if it was didn't get a chance to do it the day before, it then overrides my shutdown and thinks this is something I really have to do. So it, that may be what part of our problem has been because it was mm. set to start at nine. Okay. And we have had sometimes... What we think are Wi-Fi Jim problems at nine, and it yeah. could be just simply that other computer says, "Okay, guy, you want my backup? I didn't get a chance to do it yesterday. I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, do it now. I'm gonna do it, whether you like it or not." You know? Yeah. So I don't. I've just been taken offline. So okay. it's not gonna do it today. So it's not connected to. There's nothing else in the machine in the in the building running. Okay. So we'll see. People are saying good morning, Cameron. So oh, good morning. So, so. Okay, tell you what. Let's let's turn it around, but let's not. Uh, Let's leave, leave it. Can we do that? Can we leave it here? Because um, yeah, we're going to have to turn it back in a few minutes. Yeah. I've got it on a stand here because uh, it's really overheating. Oh, okay. So I guess yeah, you can see what's The warm going weather on. has arrived. So <coughs> the warm weather is going to be. Okay. But I'm going to be noisy here, sir. So. Uh, yeah, right. If I'm going to shake the TV crew down, I say make sure to give Cameron the persuader. <laughs> make sure they're going to do the right thing. The mic, by the way, is up there because it's oh, okay. away from the hammer. Yeah. Camera ready? Not today. Oh, mm -hmm. I probably have one. But... Camera ready? I don't know. Is this camera? Oh, am I ready to appear on camera? I don't think so. The TV, you mean? Yeah, I don't think I'm planning to. So. They could care less about this. 
Yeah. Oops. Uh, yeah. 